Thank you for joining us. Good morning. This is Off the Press on Plus TV Africa, where we take a look at the headlines, making the rounds and try to make a sense of it. Today, I'm joined by legal practitioner Dele Faratimi. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Good morning. We'll start with the Punch newspaper. COVID-19, 10 Nigerians awaiting evacuation from UK test positive. We also have under unmeted, that's at riders, 40 tested, infected persons have no symptoms commission. 57,000 new cases imminent in Kaduna, says government. Wow, that's scary. Um, we also have uh, this one that says how to access 50 billion naira COVID-19 intervention fund. That's um, according to the CBN. You find details on page 23 uh, of the paper. Um, what you're looking at just beside it is we'll hand over palliatives to governors, says federal government. Still a lot of controversy about that. Well, Harry extends lockdown as cases rise to 343. IMF excludes Nigeria from 25 nations granted debt relief. You find details on page 25. We have uh, more headlines here. Uh, NAF airlifts oxygen cylinders to isolation centers, hospitals. Uh, I think they, that was an innovation they came up with during this uh, lockdown. Uh, more headlines here. Kinsmen fume as assailants kill equity health worker. I'm ready to cure five COVID-19 patients free. That's according to our professor. Uh, details is on page 17 of the paper. We have more headlines here. Oshu councillor using Facebook to attack Oyetola arrested. Uh, Quara alleges opposition's plot to incite residents. Police arrest 130 hoodlums over Lagos attacks. No single case of robbery recorded. That's the police speaking over PDP crisis dippings, uh, Kashimu back chairman suspended. Um, Dele, let's come to you. Uh, which of these headlines would you want to uh, bite into? It's like having a litany of bad news now, isn't it? Yeah, unfortunately. Um, they do say nothing sells like bad news, but when one is the continuous recipient of cascades upon cascades of bad news, it becomes really difficult to begin to wrap one's brain around. But a few items jump to mind, and I'll speak specifically to the security situation, not just in Lagos. You know, where in Lagos, it's pretty easy for people to whip up their, their smartphones and then record the scene and post it up on social media. So it gets all sort of airplay, and everybody knows that what the, cop, the police spokesman has just said is complete bunkum. And that is, I'm, I'm watching my language because we're on TV. And the point is, is he asking us to disbelieve the evidence of our own highs? One of my friends, a two, he lives in Santos Layout, somewhere around uh, Akuan Joe Axis there. Day before yesterday, he was stuck outside his home and he couldn't enter his home for quite a while. And I doubt he was able to move out throughout yesterday because the entire Santos layout was besieged. A lot of people living in Lagos live in fear right now. So he's, let's not even be talking. This one that he just said, he showed, and then to even imagine that the president spoke extensively yesterday, but he didn't even address the security situation. And the police spokesman is now coming out to even deny that. Even so, we really have issues. Well, I th we spoke to a commissioner earlier in the news today, okay. and he talked about the fact that it's actually cultism and banditry in the Ogun State access. Uh, that's more uh, to the problem right now, an escalation. See, before you can solve a problem, you must first of all, at the minimum, acknowledge that you do have that problem. I'm afraid to say that that police commissioner, frankly speaking, does not know what he's saying if he has said that. So what if it's cultism? When we were in the university, it was always about cultism. They say, oh, they were caught. Whether they were caught or not, they committed crimes. So these ones are courts. All of a sudden, courtism has escaped from the higher institutions, is now on the street, everybody on the street. The excuse for their madness is now courtism. What about all the crimes they are committing? How is that a catch-off phrase for impunity? 
Okay, let, let's look at the IMF excluding Nigeria from 25 nations granted debt relief. Aren't we eligible, don't you think? Why should they be giving rich people what is intended for the poor? They know us better than we know ourselves. Cameron said a few years ago, he said Nigerians are fantastically corrupt. That's, a, that's, that, that's something we need to pay attention to. He didn't just say we were corrupt. He said fantastically. What was fantastic about it is that they could see what we, the citizens, are not seeing. The monies are not kept in Nigeria. The IMF have a very clear understanding of just how much of our money is attached around in banks all over the world. So why would they treat us like they would treat a country like Mali or Togo? They know us. They know how many private jets we're flying. They know the direction of luxury goods. They know how it flows into our country. They are aware of who we are. They are not poor, and they know it. So why should they be handing us what is meant for the poor? Are we so poor we spent 37 billion? We just voted 37 billion to renovate a building. We are so poor that each and every member of our legislative houses is riding in a luxury car. Are those poor people? We can fool ourselves. Okay, I, I think we get the fact that you don't think we are eligible. We are not eligible. All Let's right. stop fooling ourselves. Let them cut the waste and stop feeding themselves and feed the poor. The Nation newspaper is up next for review. Again, the lockdown is captured here. Lockdown extension, right decision to take, says Buhari. It has um, one, two riders to that story. Palliatives for one million more people. Security agencies must be firm, vigilant. Uh, please, special forces to battle Lagos Ogun criminal gangs. 191 held as robbery continues. Vigilance group harass citizens. Um, before we go to talk about other things, what's your position on the lockdown, the further extension? See, the lockdown is only one part of what ought to be done. I support the lockdown completely. But I must be very clear with you. You don't say that you're going to take one out of a raft of options that should include perhaps maybe about four or five different things to be done. So you do only one thing. Our president and the leaders of this country, they appear to be carpenters who have only one tool in their kitty. And it's just a hammer. All they know how to do is to hammer. OK, so now you've locked down. Has anybody considered the fact that the bulk of our countrymen and women live in a subsistent manner. Uh, the, if, I mean, he announced what some palliatives. palliatives. Are we now a country of our margaries ruled by emirs? One million people. How many are we? Who gets to decide who gets the one million? Who, are, who makes up that one million? The distribution of the last spending that we saw is so scandalous that they should even be ashamed to be talking about these things sometime. We are in a mess, and we need to sit down. Get, every time I get asked, what's the solution? The solutions are glaring. We are just the ones who keep dancing around the issue. What are some of these solutions? We need to completely overhaul our systems. When people hear that, the first thing that pops into mind is revolution. Okay. Fact of the matter is that some of the things we have to do in relation to our country is completely revolutionary, but they don't have to be violent. All we require is political will on the part of our leaders. Let them come to the point where they understand that what they are doing is not sustainable. Is not. Sooner or later, the people will revolt. It's already happening. The unfortunate part of the whole thing is that nobody has offered them any alternative. So what you will find, look at what the president said, special forces will be drafted. The system always emerges stronger from the crisis that it enables. So the special forces will come out. The poor persons on the road that are crying for legitimate reasons, they will be slaughtered as examples to others. And the rest will stay inside their homes hungry. So the system will not benefit from any, the people will not benefit, but the system will grow stronger. All right, let's, let's see what The Guardian has this morning. Uh, danger looms as Buhari extends lockdown by 14 days. IGP deploys intervention squads to Lagos, Ogun. We also have, we've identified 92% of contacts built two labs, says SGF. Also on the front page, we see armed youths ready to resist attacks by robbers um, in Egbada area of Lagos. 
stakeholders split over OPEC reduction of oil output. Uh, Nigeria will make extra 1 trillion naira, says Silver. Why federal government may not benefit much from the decision. Still on the front page, uh, where you have those shiny banners, blue, red. Uh, the blue one has, uh, I have COVID-19 cure, just provide five victims, uh, Don tells federal government. Uh, I, I want to take your thought on that. Internationally, from what we have read, the standard is you, you identify, you do lab clinical, and then you do further testing. And this takes quite a number of um, um, uh, months, uh, to say the least. And the best hands are working on this. And then we have our indigenous, not just this done now. We know in the past couple of days, we've had people come up to say that they can deal with it, even the only came up to say there is traditional solution. Are we undermining what could be a gold mine for the vaccine in this country? See, the worst thing that can happen to a person is to persistently lie to himself. When a person persistently lies to himself, it becomes next to impossible to get the person to do what they need to do to save themselves. We do not have the capacity to test on the scale that the Western world is testing. We simply don't have the capacity. The total amount of testing that has been done in Nigeria from the, from the, for the last two, three weeks I am not a scientist, I have confessed. I'm even a retired lawyer now, I merely write. The fact of the matter is that nobody, none of them, if it comes down to brass tacks, the last I checked, we have under 10,000 tests done in the entire federation. You can't test everybody, even the Americans cannot afford to test everybody who requires testing. Yeah. But should we explore these options But then? what you then do is to look inward what do you have? I recall it was Babangida that once said he doesn't understand how come the Nigerian economy had not collapsed. There are so many things about Nigeria and our spirits that deserves investigation. Dio only spoke about traditional cure. I know of several traditional cures that I have also used for other ailments in my own life, personal experience. And I'm sure there are several Nigerians with similar experiences. This is actually one of those times where we perhaps should begin to listen to ourselves and stop all these fascica gyrations where we want to pretend that we have the capacity to do what everybody else but in the, the world. But the concern here is, if, if you say, okay, let's explore this option, and the government is saying any consequence of this, you going, you're going to be aid. I mean, doesn't that scare people? Government says, don't do this, it's not been tested. And how can these people be so sure that they've done all the right tests, and it is safe to give humans these vaccines? Let me, let, let me say this. In the first place, the West itself has already confessed that it, has, it will require Sometime. probably like 12 to 18 months before coming up with a vaccine. They've already come up and said that. Now, in addition to that, they haven't stopped. Trump might be a blabbermouth or what have you, but at least they are willing to try things. People have come out to say, oh, we can do this. The least the government should be doing in this situation is to provide the regulatory and enabling environment for this experimental treatment to be carried out. But if they wait, God forbid, we pray a lot, and people better learn to pray a little more. We love, we love praying in Nigeria. God forbid that this virus acts in Nigeria the way it's acting in other places where it has taken hold. We already have community spread. That is clear. Yeah. But for some weird reason, perhaps because the activities of our witches and wizards have increased in recent <laughs> time, perhaps because well, there were I, other I, viruses already um, with us. I, I think the social distancing may be and some other measures are helping What's social as distancing? Well. <laughs> you and I might be socially distanced. We might take all the precautions we need to take, but the hunger virus is by far much stronger than the coronavirus. Unfortunately, that's a reality. But that is it. So much to talk about. We'll continue some other time. Thank you very much for coming on the program. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Right.
Thank you for watching as well. I hope uh, we've been able to shed more light on some of these headlines uh, with the help of our guest. Um, you can go online. Uh, probably you're not allowed to go out now. Uh, go online, take a look at these uh, stories, read them in depth, and make your own decisions. Thank you one more time. My name is Felicity Ezewike. Please be well.